Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll have a bit of a chat about a few things that have caught my attention in the press over the last couple of days or two. So uh, let's go. Now I'm off to run a few errands today. Got a few things to do out and about in the car again. And uh, I thought I'd take the opportunity to have a bit of a chat. As I said, about a few things that have caught my attention. Don't worry, I'm not going to go on about vaccinations today or anything like that. I'm going to talk about a news article which is dominating both the Spanish press and British press today about the 12 most wanted British fugitive criminals that the British police think are living here in Spain. Mm. And that is what has caught my attention. Now, I know that Years ago, back in the 1970s and 80s and 90s even, the Costa del Sol was a, a hot spot for British criminals. They used to head down there because, I think because of extradition uh, reasons. I don't think it was easy to extradite people back to the UK back in the 1970s and 80s. And uh, apparently again, the British uh, enclaves, let's say, that are popular with foreign residents are again hotspots for wanted criminals. And as I said, it caught my attention because they said in the article that if you're living in one of these places, you know, in one of these British communities in Malaga or in uh, Cardiff or Alicante or wherever, keep an eye out because these people could be living in your community. And we're talking about a wide range of criminals here, drug dealers, arms traffickers, people that are wanted for murder back in the UK. And as I said, the British police think that perhaps they're hiding down here in Spain somewhere. Now, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I thought that if you are a fugitive running from the law, the worst place to go would be to another British expat community because people there are going to know who you are. You're going to be living with people that read British press, watch British television, know what's going on in the UK, and when these things pop up, somebody might say to themselves, hey, isn't that Gary from just down the road? I didn't know that he was a wanted criminal. So that caught my attention as to why a criminal would go and live with a lot of other people. Okay, they say that maybe to blend in, but here in Spain, I think the best way to blend in is to go to a place with uh, a big population. Obviously, you don't want to go to a small village because you could, you know, become known by the local civil guard, so you wouldn't want to go there. But if you came to a big city like Madrid, Barcelona, or a medium sized city, maybe a Seville, Valencia, Alicante, I reckon you could blend in a lot better. That's just my personal opinion because, because you could probably start teaching English, you could just become a, another uh, foreigner that's decided to live in Spain. And you, you know, people ask you why you came to Spain, you say, well, you love the country, you love the culture, you love the weather, and you got sick of living in the UK, so you decided to come here and live in Spain. Enough said. And that's one of the things about Spain is that Spanish people, and I've said this on various occasions that Spanish people have a fairly live and let live attitude. So for example, I've been living here in this area for close to 20 years now, and I don't even know the people that live in the houses opposite. I know the neighbors, of course, because you have contact with them for various reasons, but people that live in front or people that live two or three doors down, and that's the same when you live in a flat here in Spain, very rarely would you know a lot of the people that are living in that building. So it would be a lot easier to, to blend in and go unrecognized, I think, if you were living among the general Spanish population. Because as I said, people here don't tend to ask questions. They don't tend to be nosy. A few people know who I am. They know that I'm from Australia because I've told them that. But nobody's come up and asked me over the last 20 years a series of questions like, where are you from? What are you doing here? and things like that. 
Now the first thing I've got to do is here at the sports centre, so I'm just going to park here and go in there and get what I need to do done. So I'll be back in a sec. Okay, first thing done. And the second thing that stands out for me when it comes to all of these criminals living down here in Spain, because remember it's not only British fugitives that are deciding to come to Spain. We've seen in recent times there's been a lot of Italian criminals caught here. Uh, people that are allegedly part of the Italian Mafia. There was a high profile case just before Christmas of a guy that was living just to the north of Madrid capital in a place called Galapagar and apparently he was a Sicilian Mafia boss who'd been living in that part of Madrid for years and he actually had a family here and owned businesses or was at least working in businesses and nobody gave it a second thought. He was just a an Italian who, as I said, chose to live in Spain because the easy argument is that Spain's better. And if you tell that to a Spanish person, they're going to say, oh, yeah, I can agree with that. Fair enough. So not only British people living here, but also Italians and other people that decide to escape justice in their country of origin. I'm just going to go down here the local area where there's quite a few banks even though as the years go by there are fewer and fewer banks in this country so British fugitives living here Italian fugitives living here and God knows how many other fugitives from various countries are deciding to come to Spain and in the case of the Italian uh, mafia bosses coming here I also read that one of the reasons was that not only because they can blend in quite well with the local population, but Spain's geographical position also makes it quite attractive for them to be able to operate their businesses here, especially when it comes to drug running, arms running, and things like that. And maybe that's the case of the British criminals as well. They bring their operations to Spain uh, because maybe the police are, are more lenient as well. I've got no idea. That could be one of the reasons. And when it comes to high profile cases that have been committed by criminals over the years, one really stands out and it was the case of a British criminal in, I think, Andalusia in the Malaga province about 20 years ago. It was a very high profile case here because a couple of Spanish girls were murdered by this individual. I think his name was Tony King, or at least that's the name that he went by here, and uh, a Spanish woman went to jail, uh, wrongly accused for, for years because of these crimes. And this was a guy that had a criminal record in the UK. I think he was, I don't know whether he committed murder in the UK, but definitely a few serious crimes. And he comes down to Spain, is able to live in that coastal area, Nobody asks any questions, and he goes out and kills two young local women. And the reason they caught him apparently was because of the cigarette butts that he was smoking. They found the same cigarette butts at both crimes that were a British brand of cigarettes. So that was the most high profile uh, British criminal case that I can recall maybe there are more and people that have been living here in Spain for a while will remember this case but uh, absolutely shocking back in the day that case and it dominated headlines and it still does today because there's a, a Netflix documentary on the subject and I recommend uh, people watch that documentary to see exactly what this Tony King character did down here in Spain and how he was able to get away for years with those murders and also apparently he was living very close to the to a civil guard police station but again this is 2022 so with all of the communication methods that we have nowadays it does seem strange that criminals would choose to live in a country like Spain especially in expat communities but anyway all right now the second thing I need to do is in the industrial area so I'll head in to it now and I'll change the topic about the uh, rent assistance that young people 
and not so young people are going to get here in Spain 250 euros a week sorry 250 euros a month to be able to break ties with the family get out rent their own place or move into shared accommodation with a few friends the government has decided to uh, make this available for young people aged between 18 and 35 so that's why I said not so young people if you're 35 I don't think you can consider yourself all that young 18 to 25 sounds more like it to me and there's a few people criticizing this uh, new government policy saying that it's going to increase the price of rents because it's going to put more money into the system and rent prices in the big cities here are already inflated and another thing people are saying is that if you live in a city like Madrid, Barcelona, Valencia where rents can be quite high uh, the 250 euros not only is it not going to come in all that handy but one of the stipulations is that the price of the place the price of the place you rent can't be more than 600 euros. And as I said yesterday, there's not a lot of places in Madrid city that cost 600 euros or less to rent. Now the autonomous communities can increase that amount to 900, but even 900 in Madrid, I think I read that something like only 24% of all rental properties fall under 900 euros. So again a bit strange there but anyway government policy they seem to have plenty of cash at the moment to splash around on things like this as we know we're heading into elections next year and this is the way that the government obviously thinks that they're going to be able to secure that youth vote which is important to them increase pensions get the elderly vote give young people the, some money for rent and secure their vote as well so uh I imagine that's what they're doing. But anyway, now I'll start to wrap the video up here. I am almost at the place that I need to be, just here on the left. So uh, I'll wrap it up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.